Hello and welcome to another drive and double feature. I'm Ryan. I'm Nathan. And this is the podcast where we talk about two movies every week, every Tuesday and Thursday. And today we're going to be talking about 1969's Shark! Exclamation point. Directed by Samuel Fuller. This movie is Probably the making of this movie is a lot more infamous than the actual movie itself, wouldn't you say? Yeah, it, it totally is. I knew I knew all about the making of this movie, right? Um, but I knew nothing about the plot. I couldn't I couldn't tell you. It wasn't until I looked it up recently. I was like, oh, it's a Burt Reynolds movie. I didn't even know that. Yeah. So before we get into it, Nathan, besides Jaws, because that's everyone's favorite shark movie, what is some of your favorite shark movies or underwater? menace yeah. type of movies um i'm gonna be i guess i haven't seen a lot of shark movies but the one that i always go to that's not jaws is uh deep blue sea which i don't think is necessarily a good movie but it's like what you'd want out of like a cheesy shark b movie right it's got action mm-hmm. it's got samuel jackson being eaten by a shark you know it's a good time uh, are you a shark movie expert by any stand like any means not really no oh, okay. uh, i mean <laughs> I do. I mean, I do like Jaws. I mean, but uh, besides Jaws, um, this is not really a shark movie, perhaps, but this is another underwater menace type of movie is uh, the movie uh, Alligator. Okay, the, nice. The one with uh, Robert Forster in it, where it's just, yeah. somebody flushed an alligator down the toilet and now it's terrorizing the city. So, mm-hmm. Classic. Uh, that seems like perfect for the show. It's. I am definitely planning on doing that at yeah. some point. And, you talked but yeah. a lot about uh, Shark Tale outside of the show. I don't know why you didn't bring that up. Classic well, film. Yeah, yeah <laughs> I mean, Martin Scorsese. I'm not really a big fan of his directing movies, but him as an actor, I love it. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that's that, that's Martin at his best. Am I right? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, Robert De Niro, Jack Black, Will Smith, Angelina Jolie, Renee Zellweger, star-studded cast. I forgot all about that. <laughs> and I, then I, oh, Christina Aguilera also sings the theme song, does a cover of the song Car Wash, but it's underwater, so whatever. <laughs> yeah, what, what, they washed <laughs> whales, right? That's what it was? Yeah. Yeah, um, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Wow, what a movie. Uh, Not a movie, but <laughs> we're getting a little sidetracked here, Nathan. Just a, li- just a little. Oh. I, sorry, I had to bring up uh, the best DreamWorks movie here on the podcast. Um, uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. I mean, we've been talking about shark movies, but this is not really much of a shark movie. No, you know, now that I think about it. <laughs> We're talking about shark movies. And like, I mean, this movie wasn't even, uh, I was just looking at trivia. It wasn't even supposed to be named shark. It was supposed to be named Kane. And then it got changed to man eater. And then it got changed to shark. Kane being the main character. Because it's not really a shark movie. (laughs) It's based off of a novel series. I think I read, right? Yes. Yeah. Because Kane is supposed to be like this literary character, like gun runner. Mm -hmm. type so um he gets involved with these treasure hunters in this movie and they kind of do like this back and forth like uh like backstabbing like they try to like get the upper hand over each other as we said at the beginning of this podcast this movie is a lot more infamous for the behind the scenes and the big story behind this is that during one of the underwater scenes uh one of the stunt divers uh, named jose marco uh, was mauled and by a shark and just died and they captured it on film and decided to use his death footage in the movie yeah it's right there in the movie cut into it huge publicity thing it even on the poster it has like the life magazine article about this guy dying like at the top it, i ever a realistic film became too real and like has a snippet from it. The thing is, is like it works because the reason I even brought it up recently and like probably because you picked it was, oh, wow, somebody died and they put it in a movie. That's <laughs> that's just interesting. Yeah, yeah. I it, it really is. I mean, just just the thought that one of his family members could just like go watch his death like anytime. Just it's like, it's right yeah. there on screen. I could you go pop the DVD and I can just see one of my loved family members just dying on screen. 
Yeah, and it's distributed. <laughs> Somebody could pick it up on DVD and watch it from the comfort of their couch. And to be honest, this is probably the, I mean, the only thing this movie really has going for it anyway. They were really lucky that they got that to promote this movie. Because I we've talked, I, at least personally on my end, I thought this movie was a little bit of a snore. It was, it was a bit of a bore fest. It's very boring. I really, I mean, I really wanted to like it. Uh, Same. Because, I mean, I do, I am actually a Burt Reynolds fan. I've watched a lot of his movies from the 70s and the 80s during his peak. Uh, I was really just looking for like, the, you know, smarmy, like really charming type of guy but he's really not like that at all in fact to me it seemed like he was doing a really bad marlon brando impression like he was just trying to yeah. like channel marlon brando i kind of got that feeling too which is interesting because he, he had like the handkerchief and like just the way he was acting it de- definitely was going on marlon brando and would have fit perfect with the time with the 1969 release for him to really go off of that i i guess he hadn't found his own yet like f- really what his personality was on film. Not not to say, I think that character had a chance to be cool. I really do. And I don't, I don't necessarily think that it's too awful, but it, it definitely like seeing Burt Reynolds, you expect some level of personality and you just really don't get that fully out of this character. No, I, I didn't really get a sense of what his personality is. I mean, you kind of get the impression that he's this con artist type. He's a he's a gun runner at the beginning of the movie. Uh, the police capture him because they notice he's smuggling in weapons. And he's he's kind of the guy that wants to get that quick buck or just what what's the next big score type of thing. And he, he runs into these people posing as like marine biologists sort of that mm-hmm. want to go, but really in actuality, they're treasure hunters. And so they want to try to use cane to help them go underwater and cut open through this ship and take yeah. all the riches inside. And here's one of the things I want to talk about this movie, because I think this movie is really interesting is this movie feels really old school is the way I would put it. For 1969, this movie felt much older. It felt like something out of like the 50s. It reminded me a lot of Wages of Fear, a classic 40s film. Um, kind of like the same deal, I think, of like some like down and out people really trying to get that big score, um, kind of stuck in a situation in a foreign country because this is set in uh, Sudan. It's set in Sudan, but... It's filmed in Mexico, and it looks just like Mexico. Yes, it does, yeah. (laughs) Yeah, it definitely, uh, they definitely did not cover that up at all. No, and they they try to be really cute with it, too, and every... Every character but Burt Reynolds has like a little fez hat on too. It seems (laughs) like to really put it all together. Uh, Definitely brown face going on in this one. Yeah, Mm -hmm. Uh, he meets a little boy, the friends who's (laughs) named Yeah, who's clearly a little Mexican boy, Mm -hmm. and (laughs) who likes to smoke too. And the kid really wants uh, Burt Reynolds cigarettes, and he's like, "Nah, kid, this will will stunt your growth." Yeah, there's like another character that's a drunk in this movie that tries to make a deal with the little kid, and he tries to make that deal, and the kid's like, "I want a Cuban cigar." That's that's what he wants out of the deal. Yeah, I mean, going back to what you said before, it does feel like one of those really old school type of movies, but. Mm-hmm. This movie, I think the biggest issue I have with it is that there is a ton of padding to this movie. Just scenes that just go on way too long or just scenes where they're not really doing anything particular and it's nothing like that exciting. Like there's a scene, so there's a little there's a scene where the boy get the little boy gets hurt, so they get the the doctor to perform surgery on the boy. And it felt like I was watching a surgery, like an unedited <laughs> surgery, because it's just he's working on this kid for like, felt like 10 minutes straight. Mm-hmm. No, and I, I feel that. No, this movie, I feel bad saying this, but there were times I definitely tuned out. Like scenes were going on and I just like, you, you get your eyes glaze over a little and then the scene's over. It's like, oh, wow. Okay. Uh, I guess we're on to the next thing. Yeah. And it's... Yeah. It, 
and it's not like these people had really exciting personalities either. It wasn't exciting no. dialogue. Cause I mean, cause we don't need you and I, we don't need a movie to be constantly in your face and giving us exciting scenes. No. I mean, if you're giving me, if you're showing me something interesting with dialogue characters, that sort of thing, I, I'm more than happy to take that, but I don't feel like we got any of those things. No, because like, I think they wanted to build an interesting set of characters with our treasure hunters um, being like romantic with each other, but both of them just felt really stale to me. I, I never was really invested in them. I don't know what they were going for. It, it is just very messy, their whole character arc and everything. Yeah, I just, I didn't really care at any point. And I, just like you, I tuned out a lot as well. Um, yeah. I, I will say, I did kind of, my interest was kind of peaking towards the end when it was, when it was, you know, they were back because, well, okay, they go down underwater and they finally get the treasure and then the sharks attack. And, but that scene even goes on really long and it's not very exciting either. But yeah. when he does surface, uh, you know, she betrays him, the, pl- the police officer on the ship betrays both of them. Then she betrays him again. Yeah. And then at the end, he really did get the upper hand because he, uh, let the boat start sinking. And so as she's driving away, you, the audience knows it's like, oh, she's going to sink later, just out in the middle of the ocean and die. Yeah, yeah. See, I like that because it was just so bizarre. Like the double cross on the double cross on the double cross. It was, uh, <laughs> that I thought was pretty cool. Um, it just wasn't because like uh, some of the movies we cover on here are slow burn, right? We slow burn, but with a solid and great ending. I maybe didn't find that ending exciting enough to really warrant how much time it took to get there. No. And even those slow burn movies, there's at least something to kind of whet your appetite all the way up to that point. But Mm -hmm. I don't really, like I said, I don't really feel like we got that at at any point. No. Um, I guess positives. uh, There is constantly music playing throughout this movie and it's pretty, it's pretty great. It's like a really jazzy soundtrack, a lot of sax. It's, it's, that was nice. Uh, I enjoyed that. It's not bad. And it's not, I don't feel like the movie was terrible at any points. It just was very bland. That's almost worse than being terrible. It, it, yeah, exactly. I wouldn't put it at the bottom of the list, but of like of our episodes that we've done, but it's going to be one that maybe let's say 30 episodes later. Because we are on episode 30, really exciting. But let's say when we hit episode 60 and you tell me, oh, remember when we did Shark? I might be like, what? Hmm? We did Jaws at some point? I don't, I, I don't know. <laughs> For a movie with an exclamation point in its title, I don't think that exclamation point is very warranted. Maybe a period, but definitely not an exclamation point. <laughs> or maybe a shark dot dot dot. I, I'd be all for that. Yeah, I'd be fine with that. That's uh-huh. totally acceptable. Yeah, un- unfortunately, I'm. Tr- I tried to dig into this movie to really pull out a lot to talk about. Just, I don't feel like there's a lot there. I mean, obviously, Sam Sam Fuller did not care for this movie. He tried to take his name off of this almost like immediately after it was done. And uh, I guess he saw it in the theater and just thought it was like the worst thing he had seen. Yeah, he totally disowned this movie because after what happened, he pretty much just wanted nothing to do with it by the end of it, especially the way they marketed it. And then he he eliminated himself from the editing process. Mm-hmm. So the studio took over. And as we both know, I mean, Samuel Fuller, he's a good director. He's made movies that I've enjoyed. So I yeah. don't I don't think it was his fault that it came out this way. No, no. I mean, like he he did write it. But maybe he, in the editing process, he could have, like, cut it in a way to keep it interesting throughout, right? The studio probably got the material, didn't know how to even put it together, and put it put it together in a very, like, rudimentary, basic way, which is not what this movie needed. Yeah, it's, yeah. it really just, it, it, but I don't, I, don't, I don't know. I mean, I just, I just struggle <laughs> to think how good it could have been, even with, him at the helm because i just i don't know maybe there was just something that was totally just cut on the cutting room floor that <laughs> changes my mind but maybe I, but i don't i can't imagine it would change too much honestly no it might honestly just be a little bit of a 
a blight on his career of great, great movies. A lot that we I want to talk about on the show for sure. So I want to go back to the production and Jose Marco and the accident real quick. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, which one thing I do, one point I do want to make is it is crazy that they advertise it like that. Can you imagine <laughs> like a movie? Well, I said this to you before when we were meant talking about this movie can you imagine if they did that in today's world like imagine if so in recent news alec baldwin unfortunately shot and killed a stunt woman during the making of the movie rust mm-hmm. and can you imagine if that movie rust comes out and it's just like a big poster <laughs> of like this woman getting like shot no and they just, and they just <laughs> advertise it like see alec baldwin shooting a woman for real uh-huh and it's got like a new york times article on it and alec baldwin murderer or something like that <laughs> yeah i mean i you could not get away with that this is definitely like the wild west i mean i still don't understand how they got away with it then there had to like i feel like that's so controversial so to counterpoint that i'm going to say something really crazy what's that um i don't know if you looked on imdb um but there is a trivia fact in there that when they went to look up the history of this incident, there was no death certificate filled. Um, when they went to, when they spoke to Life Magazine, they had no comment. And also this guy has had no other credits. There's no other birth dates or information about this man that died in this movie. So the crazy thing I'm going to say is, do you think they made up this death in order to make this movie more exciting? They they could have. I but I guess you got to explain why Sam Fuller left. Maybe maybe he left because the studio was like, "Hey, we're gonna do this stunt because your movie's a stinker." Um, that's what I was thinking. Out. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely possible. Uh, is that there's a shark conspiracy theory? I didn't even know that's. I could see that. I could see them really trying to drum up because from there is a lot of stuff on this movie. I think they put a good amount of money into this movie and they realized, oh, it's not going to be that good. Yeah. And I just, I mean, I don't want to suggest, I mean, if this actually did happen, I'm not trying to make light of any death or anything like that, or be like a conspiracy theorist or anything like that. But I do know like back in the day, I mean, even like the Blair Witch Project, they claimed that these people really died during the making of this movie, which mm. they didn't. They were just actors. So that's why I was just kind of in the back of my mind is, you know, maybe they just kind of got to the point where they're just like, this movie's not really working out. And they kind of advertised it as, hey, see this guy die on film for real with this real shark. And then Samuel Fuller just like, you know, what the hell? And then just yeah. totally bailed. So that's... I, I, could I had it. that in the back. I had, I just, I had that thought. I mean, if it did happen, but from what I've seen, it's a lot of people talking about the incident and no like official news articles, just a lot yeah. of top 10, like top 10 movies where an actor died on set. That's a lot of what I found. Yeah. And I mean, honestly, watching the movie, um, there's a couple scenes where somebody gets attacked by a shark, but there was nothing definitively that I saw where I was like, oh, that's when he died. You know what I mean? It's it's a bit, it's like a gray area, kind of. It is, because the shark does get really close to the diver, and then you kind of see this big, like, grimy red cloud, like, come out a little bit. So mm-hmm. it doesn't, it's not like the shark is bit into the guy's arm or you see like a limb come off or anything like that. So I don't really know, but to me, I, I wouldn't be too terribly surprised if this whole thing was made up. Yeah. I, I could see it. It's probably some, that that's, uh, that's scummy, but I guess that's, that's actually less scummy than putting somebody's death into the movie. And it's true. I would much rather have them made up a fake death than them actually like here's a guy dying in this movie and we're going to use that to our advantage because they yeah. reuse that too at the beginning of the movie mm-hmm. they, the movie starts with the guy being mauled to death and and then the, and then they reuse that same shot 
when one of the other characters gets attacked by the shark. And they're obviously trying to promote that. Like, as soon as the movie started and I saw that footage, I was like, oh my God, they're really <laughs> going, they're really starting the movie like this. The people could go to the movie theater, see that one scene, and be like, all right, I'm out. <laughs> Bye. I saw what I came here for. Yeah, well, I, I was like, at least tease it, you know, maybe have it at the end of the movie or whatever. But yeah. Because. Okay, so the only thing that plays into that theory a little bit for me is that the movie starts with the mauling, and then the characters start talking about, like, oh, our partner died. He was eaten by a shark. So Mm -hmm. it's a little convenient, in my opinion, that the one scene where they're talking about a guy getting eaten by a shark, and they actually happen to actually have a real shark attack. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you, just to, like talk about this a little bit more this scene we're talking about is like the only shark action in the movie it's a very few it very much feels like they they just capitalized on the shark death and so instead of calling it cane or whatever they they Mm -hmm. called it shark just to hopefully some somebody would see this movie just strictly see somebody die but at the end of the day i don't think it even worked on a level because this movie is not really remembered it's remembered a little bit more because of what happened i don't think if if it was kane i don't think anyone would care but it still is a kind of obscure movie Mm -hmm. and i personally would not recommend it Oh yeah, it's a it's a not recommend. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. This is probably another movie that we kind of trashed, but it's definitely just bland. But as usual, I'm happy that we saw it, and we I'm happy we could tell you guys that you don't have to see it. So, <laughs> and uh, we'll be we'll pro- hopefully be diving in and doing a much more entertaining shark movie in the future. Oh yeah, there's so many. We might even do a killer whale movie. Who knows? That I'm looking forward to. But until then, Nathan, what are we going to be talking about on our next episode? All right. So next episode, we're going to be talking about the 1977 Mario Bava movie, Shock. Shark and Shock? Shark and Shock. Not in the same week, though, but, you know, one after another. Yeah, and that is available to watch on Tubi. So, yeah, check it out over there. It's actually a pretty good quality cut of the movie. Well, if you know anybody that was attacked by a shark or you want to talk about the movie Shark, please email us at podcast at gmail.com. Or if you just want to let us know your feelings, general recommendations, movies you feel like we could talk about, we're always taking recommendations. We might even do one here pretty soon. But until then, until next time. See you next time.